Jahangir and I'm working as an assistant manager at Agrovet Food Division, Karachi. I welcome all the guests here and online to this awareness webinar. It is my pleasure to guide you through the schedule of today's event. The event will start with welcome, uh, welcome remarks from DG Abdul Karim Mehman, Agrovet Food Division, Karachi. And then the event will start with Mr. Atas Sajjad, founder chairman of Halal Development Council. And he will give us a presentation on Pakistan potential and the global halal trade. Followed up by speeches from Mukti Najib Khan and Alama Shabir Hassan Mosani, our religious scholars. It is requested from all to follow up the program schedule and question and answer session will be held at the end of the event. Now I would like to invite Mr. Abdul Karim Neiman to come on the floor and give welcome note to us. Bismillah and Rahim. Bismillah and Halal page the third webinar for a Nepal webinar. Yet, I was very impressed. Pakistan National Accreditation Council. Halal ek jo hai wo concept hai khas taur pe musliman logon ke yahan jo jo ke puri duniya mein jo hai abhi prevail kar raha hai aur non muslim bhi like karte hain ki agar uske halal likha hua hota hai musliman to waisi karte hain kabhi hum waisi muslim jo hai hum chahte hain ki hame jo na halal cheeze mile aur hamare paas ye concept hai ki halal jo hai video assalamu alaikum bismillah rahman rahim i want to start with uh, my trip to south africa johannesburg this was some 13 years ago i was visiting a food exhibition one of the largest food exhibition and i was there as a buyer visiting different stands. During that, I came across um, a sign which said Halal Pavilion. Very surprised. For me, Halal was meat and poultry. So I wanted to see what's inside. I went inside that pavilion and to my surprise, they were all food products. So I was roaming around and uh, I was there as a marketeer trying to market and sell Pakistani products. And I, I had noticed a man who was uh, trying to negotiate prices with the um, uh, with exhibitor. So I realized he was a buyer. So I waited for him and when he came out of the stand, I got hold of him in the corridor, introduced myself as uh, someone from Pakistan. He was very, very happy. 
kiss me, he said, brother, you are a good person from Pakistan. We love Pakistan. He was a bearded guy and um, a Muslim, obviously. So I introduced myself and I took out um, a, a bottle of Ru Abza, the Mashrub Mashrub, from my bag, which I was marketing. And I told him if uh, that this is a Pakistani product, would you want to buy this? So he saw that and he turned it around and he came close to me, whispered in my ear, asking me, brother, is this red wine? So I got offended. I said, no, 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 we are Muslim country. There is no red wine, there is no wine. And this is mushroom and mushroom. I explained to him that this is, uh, we drink it mostly in Ramadan. So it is a technically unofficially Islamic drink. He said, really? He saw the bottle again and he said, why it does not have halal? So I explained to him, brother, I'm from Islamic Republic of Pakistan. Everything is halal. Why I need a halal mark? So he said, wait. He took out a sample of product from his bag, showed it to me that, look, Mr. Asad, this is a product from Indonesia, the biggest Islamic country. It says halal. Another product he take out from his bag and he said, this is from Malaysia, big Islamic country. It says halal. Pakistan, no say halal. This was the biggest lesson I got at that time. I understood the power of halal brand. The buyer was there. He knew I'm Muslim. I'm from Pakistan. But still he was asking me why my product is not halal. So coming from Islamic Republic of Pakistan does not mean that everybody knows. We, everybody knows we are Muslims. But then nobody knew at that time Pakistan as a halal product supplier. And the status still continues. Ru Abza got halal certified, mashallah. Uh, they were, uh, I'm sure, halal, but they are halal certified properly. But my journey into this um, uh, you know, halal space started with that and still is uh, continuing. My name is uh, Asad Sajjad, and I'm representing an organization called Halal Development Council, commonly known as HDC, Pakistan. And I've been invited here to speak to you regarding my experience of the global halal market. Very quickly, Halal Development Council is an NGO working in the MENA region for the development of halal economy. Trillion dollar global halal market, which is controlled by the non-OIC countries and the power of halal branding to open the doors of global halal market for the OIC countries. I just want to make sure you people can, uh, can see my screen. No, because I had only, I realized this, so. That only I am watching, okay, now. Apologize for this. Okay, thank you very much. So, Halal Development Council, as I told you, NGO, trillion dollar market, power of halal branding, I don't want to repeat. And this is what we do. Our objective is very, very clear, to facilitate the efforts of the industry, trade bodies, and the government by creating awareness regarding importance of halal compliance and power of halal branding as a tool to enhance the economic growth in the OIC countries. Very clear objective. Moving forward. Global halal market. You know, the economic experts, researchers, gurus have claimed the total size of global halal food market to be in the vicinity of $630 billion per year. That's billion with a B every year. This is the turnover of halal food which is happening in the world. And based on the 1.9 billion Muslim consumers. But if we include the non-Muslims also, because they also consume halal food, the figure, the turnover will be much higher. And if you include food and non-food and services together, we're talking about a global halal market in total around $3 trillion. I mean, this is trillion with a T. We don't know what trillion is in Pakistan. It does not even come on our calculator. So, but this is a lot of money. It's a huge market. And this is the turnover which is happening every year. I'm going to share with you the favorite copy of my Times of Times magazine, which I keep 
2009, this is May 2009, almost the same time when I started, uh, at Times Magazine gave this photo on their cover. It says halal economy, more than a trillion dollars a year. That was the first time when Times called it the economy. Before this, people used to call it the halal market. But so after this, everybody started using the word economy. Surely, trillion dollars 13, 14 years ago, we're talking about a three trillion dollar halal economy now. What is covered under this halal umbrella? We are dividing it into three sectors, food, which is consumables, non-food, which is non-consumables, and service sectors. Very quickly, food consumables include all type of processed food, fresh, frozen, packaged, all type of beverages, drinkable, starting from milk, soft drink, juices, water, to syrups and energy drinks. Confectionery, dairy, bakery, agriculture products, and seafood, raw materials of all kinds which goes into food and beverages, ingredients, additive flavors, fragrances, everything is included. Meat and poultry, slaughtering and processing, of course. Special food, herbal food, baby food, health food, food service, restaurants, cafes, fast food, canteens, caterings, and also are included dietary supplements, pharma, nutra, and other type of medicines. Why? This is the portion which is consumed. So we include it in the consumable section. Moving on to non-food, which is non-consumable. The biggest chunk, cosmetics, personal care, body care, toiletries, perfumes. And then we have animal and poultry feed. We also have small portion of leather products, including apparels and accessories. Packaging and processing material for the non-food as well as food major section cleaning chemicals processing aids again used in both food and non-food industry pharma and nutraceuticals the non-consumable uh, side of it disposable hygiene products and also modest fashion products this is a summary of non uh, non-food service is very vital part of the halal value chain it starts from Halal tourism, or most popularly known as Muslim friendly tourism and travel and hospitality. Then we also have a small section of halal medical tourism, halal processing, and packaging, the complete supply chain for both food and non food products. Consultancy includes halal audit, certification, testing, etc. Then we have a halal industrial development sector which includes halal parks, halal food parks, halal export zone, etc. Malaysia has, has championed in this. Last I remember, there are more than a dozen halal parks in Malaysia. Then halal logistics, security, and storage. Very important to ensure a product remains halal from its origin to the consumers. Or it's most commonly known as from farm to fork. And this is more, more important in the countries where haram is commonly available, you know, pork and alcohol is commonly available uh, with the, in the market. So that's where halal logistics is very, very important. And a country like Pakistan, where officially there is no haram available. So it's not so important. So this is the summary of what all is included. But the next thing which comes to my mind, somebody is making a lot of money. You know, who's making the money? Who's the manufacturer, exporter, supplier? Is it Saudi Arabia, the most popular Islamic country? Or is it Egypt or Turkey, Iran, UAE? Which Islamic country is holding this trillion dollar market? And then when we do our research, it is very surprising. The 10 biggest exporters of halal products are non-Muslim countries, non-Muslim companies in the non-Muslim countries. Here you go. India, Brazil, Australia, USA, Argentina, New Zealand, France, Thailand, Philippines, and Singapore enjoy almost 80 to 85 percent of the global halal market share. This is no story. This is the reality. It's trillion dollars of market is controlled by these countries. And then there's a, a big list of other non-Muslim countries which are having this um, share. India, our neighbor, the biggest Hindu country in the world, 
they are the also the biggest in halal meat, the kara meat uh, section, followed by Australia in the red meat section, the biggest in the world. Brazil, again, a Christian country, the biggest in halal poultry industry. Thailand, a Buddhist country, is the biggest in halal products. Last year, we checked, Thailand had more than 400, I beg your pardon, 200,000 halal certified products coming out from 4,500 halal certified factories and ever increasing. Malaysia and Indonesia are the two Muslim countries which have an almost 15% share in the global halal market. The rest is Turkey, Iran, UAE, and most recently, KSA also, Saudi Arabia joined uh, the race, become active. But this is, the majority is 80, 85% in the hands of the same country. So moving on, I'll give you some figures. <clears throat> Brazil, more than a million frozen halal chickens exported every year. France, more than 750 metric tons of halal frozen chicken exported every year. USA is the fourth largest beef exporter in the world. And 80% of US frozen beef export is halal. Surprise? New Zealand, the fifth largest beef exporter in the world. 40% of New Zealand beef export is halal. So this is what all is happening in the world. Who's the consumer? Who's, where are the buyers? We have divided them into continent-wise. Asia has more than 1.1 billion halal consumers. Africa, including East, West, North, South, more than 470 million halal consumers. Europe, 50 million plus consumers. America, Americas, including Brazil, Canada, South, Central, and Caribbean, more than 10 million halal consumers. Oceania, small market, New Zealand, Australia, Fiji, half a million halal consumers. But this, ladies and gentlemen, is your target market in the world, as the research shows. This is where the halal consumers are living. Some figures for your interest, some examples. Europe does almost $66 billion of halal food products, also known food every year. France alone does $17 billion. A year. UK halal meat sale more than 600 million annually. America spends, this is uh, USA, more than 13 billion dollars in halal food every year. GCC, the Gulf countries, food imports 26 billion dollars a year. Among this, Saudi more than 12 billion dollars. Indonesia, the biggest Muslim country, the biggest bill. They have almost $70 billion. Other major buyers include Malaysia, Egypt, Iran, Africa, and other Muslim countries. So this is the summary of some of the examples, not a summary. Moving on to the global halal market potential. Many times people ask me, what is the global halal market future? Can we invest? Is it worth spending money into this industry anymore? Is there any growth in the halal market? So to answer such questions regarding the future growth potential of the halal market, I'm going to share with you the summary of the State of Global Islamic Economy Report 2020. This report is written by a research organization called Dinar Standards of USA, which is now based in UAE. And they have got a special assignment from the UAE government to make this report every year. They are doing it for the last six, seven years. It's the most authentic research report presently available. And I'm going to share the data with you. Halal food sector. In 2018, it was $1.3 billion. Projection of 2024, $1.9 billion. You can see the growth pattern. Halal pharmaceutical and nutraceutical 2018, figure was $92 billion. Projection, 134 billion, hitting by 2024. Halal cosmetics and personal care, 64 billion was the figure for 2018. Moving on to 95 billion, projected for 2024. Modest fashion. I realize some people call it halal fashion. This is not halal fashion. There's no, uh, we don't mix halal with fashion. 
things. There are two separate things. So just for clarification, modest fashion is the right terminology, which is used for the fashion, which normally Muslim women wear uh, in Muslim and non-Muslim countries. $280 billion was the turnover in 2018, projected to $400 billion in 2024. Amazing. Halal travel and tourism industry, halal hospitality. $189 billion 2018, projected to $74 billion. Media and recreation. Halal media and recreation, $220 billion in 2018, projected to $300 billion by 2024. So this is now a summary of the same figures I, I gave you. So you can see there's a huge growth and definitely worth spending money, worth investing, worth coming into this industry, anybody is interested in Pakistan or anywhere in the world. Halal is booming. Ladies and gentlemen, the halal products are recognized as good quality and healthy products, especially the halal food, because halal, when it comes in Quran, it says halal wa tayyab, and the tayyab reflects the goodness of the product. So because halal is recognized as good quality and healthy, so a lot of non-Muslim consumers also buy halal products for the sake of the goodness of the product. Players from every sector, including big multinationals, everybody is into this game or trying to capture their share from this growing halal market. Famous international brands, major hypermarkets in Muslim and non-Muslim countries in the world are keeping halal. The last example, was the biggest store in the world called Walmart. I was very happy when I heard that Walmart started with 10 stores in USA, moved up to a few hundred all of a sudden because of the huge demand, keeping halal certified products. So everyone is trying to get their share from this market, especially in the non-Muslim countries where the Muslims are, are, are residing. I'm gonna show you some interesting photos, please pay attention. These are some leading fast food brands, which you can find as halal certified in different countries of the world, also in non-Western countries. These are some famous packaged food brands which you will find selling halal certified products in different countries, all top brands of the world. Some of the cosmetic brands selling halal certified products. There are a lot more, but I could only catch these. some of the leading pharmaceutical brands selling halal certified products. Ladies and gentlemen, there are no Pakistani brands. This presentation is about Pakistan, so we did not find single Pakistani owned brands. So what is the issue? Why Pakistani brands, the top brands, why they are not there in the global halal market? This billion dollar, trillion dollar market, Pakistan is not there. What are the issues in promotion of the halal industry in Pakistan? This is how we have to move on. There are many local issues we have in Pakistan that hamper the growth of our industry. I've noted a few of them on paper, so I'll just read them out to you. I didn't have time to put it on the slides. The first one is the shortage of halal raw material for processing industry. Even our meat export is affected due to the shortage of cattle, which is exported and smuggled in different countries. We have high cost of production also because of shortage of raw material. Otherwise, as well, making it difficult to compete in the international market. Normally, we haven't found any specific focus of our uh, governments on export promotion of halal products. No government strategy, no clear strategy on halal economy development, including the example of Pakistan Halal Authority. It was formed a few years ago. We were very, very happy, but then 
for a long time it was uh, sitting in a drawer and when finally we got a director general that gentleman has uh, has been working up all by himself for over a year their internal issues and this authority is under under con uh, control of a ministry that is uh, that is not even directly relevant to exports or industrial development and has has really spent so many years for the halal authority just doing nothing even after the formation and appointment of DG. practically no work is going on because of internal issues in, in, in within inverted commas china is our best friend Park Jin, those days in the bar we have heard i've heard since i was a small kid you know best friend of pakistan china ladies and gentlemen is importing almost 65 percent 60 65 percent of its meat from five to six countries none of those countries are muslim countries and pakistan is not included in, the, in those five six countries and since i don't know 10 20 30 years I've, I've heard this. Pakistani companies are exporting to China through Vietnam, through here and there. No direct export is allowed. Governments come, the government goes. Different political parties come with different agenda. Even the Chinese president came last year or the year before that. But nobody has even really tried to push the Chinese government to open the trade of meat exports. We have misdirected government officials, and I tell you, I'm going on very, very quickly, which have taken wrong decisions in the past in this halal space. An example, Dubai decided to lay down their rules and standards to control the halal world and the halal products and become the hub of Islamic economy in the world. That was their decision. Pakistan government helped Dubai in this initiative excellent but with zero benefit to pakistan till today we are part of that but there's no benefit coming to pakistan which could have come so misdirection of the government officials who were involved lack of knowledge by our government on who can facilitate us internationally example malaysia has been getting financing and help from the IDB, Islamic Development Bank, which is under OIC, every year for the halal promotional activities in Malaysia, IDB is helping, funding. Nobody from Pakistan has ever gone. And this was complained to me from an IDB official, why Pakistan does not come and take financing from us when Malaysia is taking. Nobody ever thought of this. Moving on, I mean, we never thought of even developing a halal Pakistan brand for, uh, for the global market. No branding, no existence. We don't have any real incentive to the local industrialists to invest in the halal food industry. We have no attraction to the foreign investors who are investing in halal industry in different countries, including Malaysia. They are not bringing any FDI into Pakistan. We don't even have any concept of halal parks, halal zones. A few years ago, I tried, I went to the EPC and the National Industrial Park. They were very happy with the proposals. What I wanted to push them to open halal parks. And they were very happy. That was the last time I heard of them. They follow up, nobody was interested. So these are some of the factors which are hampering Pakistan. But I'm going to move on to the global issues, which also includes Pakistan. The biggest global issue is lack of awareness. Lack of awareness, we have divided into five different parts just for your convenience. The biggest lack of awareness, ladies and gentlemen, is about halal, is not limited to meat only. It's not about slaughtering, but it covers all food products, all non-food products. So when somebody comes to you for halal, you don't say, yes, halal meat, yes, halal food. No. When I meet people, ah, Mr. Asad, from halal food, no, I have nothing to do with halal food. I'm from the halal space. Food is a part of it. And slaughtering is definitely not the only thing. Lack of awareness regarding potential of global halal market. What product sectors are included in this market? How I can enter this trillion dollar market? What do I have to do? People do not know. 
lack of awareness regarding the importance of halal branding for the global market. How important is this halal branding in the world? Lack of awareness regarding the importance of halal compliance. That means the chances of haram contamination in non-halal certified products. People do not know. And when you talk to them, they get offended. And lack of awareness regarding the dangers of self-declaration. Or in Arab countries, when you go and talk to somebody, they'll say, Habibi, kullo halal. Means everything is halal. So there is no more Habibi kullo halal now. It was kullo halal maybe 20 years ago. No more. If you know how much contamination of haram is present in the world, you'll freak out. This is not a subject now, so I'm not going to give details on, on what are the issues. I'm going to give you two examples, especially the, the, the point regarding Zabi. Our understanding of halal, brothers and sisters, is limited to only slaughtering. And that, let's face it, most Muslim countries, including Pakistan, when we talk about halal, the only thing which comes to our mind is meat. Halal meat, halal chicken. And this is a misconception. Yes, meat, chicken is the most important part of halal, the zabi. But then, as I explained to you, all products are included. So halal is not limited to meat. A lot of products we use in our daily life are made from, or let me rephrase, could be made from big byproduct. Yes, khanzir. And that includes food and also non-food products. Why am I saying this? Because I know I've read a research done by a, a, a lady uh, in Europe three years ago. Uh, and uh, she printed a book, which I have, have with me. It confirms the product made from pigs. And the research discovered 185 different products were made from pig. Huge number of food products, which we use every day. So we have to be very, very careful. The second thing I want to talk to you about is dangers of self-declaration. Or as I said, kullo halal. What is self-declaration? Writing H-A-L-A-L -A -L or halam alif lam on your product is called self-declaration, which is a risk of haram and must be avoided. And I am Muslim. My father is a Muslim. My family tree goes to the Prophet Sallallahu but it does not mean the product which I'm making is fit for the Muslims unless I get my product tested, checked by a competent authority who get certified that yes, it is halal. Unless I get the certificate, the product should not be called halal. Ignorance or cheating by suppliers, manufacturers could mean mixing of haram ingredients. And this can be avoided only if the products are certified by a competent authority. I have many examples which I'm not going to show you now because of the time frame, where haram products were labeled as halal in different countries of the world by mistake or even falsely labeling, and they were caught. The reason is only one, self-declaration. It has to be avoided. It's like our neighboring country, UAE. Now, nobody can write halal on their product. If you want to write halal, you have to have halal certificate. Otherwise, it's punishable by law. And that's something which our country, Pakistan, should uh, go for. Nobody should be allowed to write halal unless they have a certificate from a accredited certification body. Sure, then write in English, Urdu, or any language you want. If you don't have a certificate, a valid certificate, take your products out from the shelf or be penalized. This is how the government can help to stop self declaration Moving on, I'll talk to you about some challenges which are in the global industry. Also, Pakistan is part of that. The biggest, one of the biggest is the multiple halal standards, which is the biggest trade barrier. And Pakistan, unfortunately, is part of it. I know my friends uh, are listening so please pardon me for being candid because there is no other way when i go to the oic halal uh, standard meeting 
even their secretary general of the OIC, Samik, the halal body of OIC, have complained. Pakistan is, a, is an active member. When Pakistan comes, and other Muslim countries included, when they come to our meeting, they talk about unification of halal standards, harmonization of halal standards. But when they go back, they all talk about their own halal standards, including Pakistan. And that is true, unfortunately. How big is this problem? I'll give you an example. Indonesia, very strict halal standard. Indonesian products cannot be accepted in Malaysia because Malaysia has even stricter halal standards. Neighboring countries. The Malaysian strict halal standards, Malaysian products, a lot of them cannot be accepted in Pakistan because Pakistan has even stricter halal standards. This is a perfect example of three countries having three different halal standards not able to accept because of the differences. This has to be removed. We cannot accept each other. We have to harmonize. And this is the biggest trade barrier. Everyone is a leader, but there is no leadership. New countries step into the halal space and they say, I want to be the leader. I want to be the halal. For God's sake, first learn, first develop yourself, then become the leader. Do not start off in this space with a leadership claim and do nothing. We have a lack of halal trainings, which is resulting in lack of trained staff. This is in Pakistan, a lot of problem. We don't find halal trained staff and also in other Muslim countries and non-Muslim countries. We have a lack of halal raw material and ingredients in Pakistan. And this is also an opportunity for people to come into the halal raw material and ingredients manufacturing because a lot of it is imported. Why we cannot make it in Pakistan? Because why it is important? Because all the factories, production houses, companies who are manufacturing halal products certified, they must use halal certified halal uh, ingredients and halal certified raw materials. Otherwise, the certification body don't allow. So the, the, the companies have a lot of problem sourcing these ingredients or material and they end up importing it from any country. We have non-Muslim owned certification bodies, generally globally, which is uh, we are, who are doing halal and this is against global halal regulation. Thank God in Pakistan, there's a ban on this because you know the international halal standards say that the halal certification body must be owned, managed and operated by Muslims. So this is a pro outside Pakistan in our neighboring countries. This is a major problem where non-Muslim owned certification bodies are doing certification. You call them and maybe uh, Angelina or Rita or uh, Naresh will pick up the phone and try to teach you halal. And more so even the accreditation of halal is now being allowed for non-Muslim accrediting body. So that is a big, a big issue, but not in Pakistan. Globally, we have certification bodies working without Sharia scholar, without technical experts. We have briefcase CVs. We call them briefcase CVs because mama, papa, or father, son CVs are doing Allah certification. So anyone who's going for Allah certification must make sure that it's not a beautiful website with a briefcase. There is a proper office, staff, trained, and experience get their CVs before you commit to any certification body. Then non-accredited halal CVs. Alhamdulillah in Pakistan, halal accreditation for certification bodies is very strong, but still it is not mandatory. So I think seven, eight or nine halal certification bodies have been accredited by the government of Pakistan. Excellent. But there are maybe twice as many working still non-accredited and there is no law to stop them because unfortunately, the government has made it voluntary. So non-accredited certification bodies are still working and offering you certificates for 20,000 rupees or sometimes even 10,000 rupees. I've heard also one person here over at dinner, seriously. And then lack of awareness. This is also a major issue which I've already explained to you. Moving on, some suggestions 
for Pakistani halal export promotion and halal economy development. This is the last part of my presentation. For the halal food sector, Pakistan is an agriculture country, no doubt. So big potential for meat export, as we all know. We have many abattoirs in Karachi and Lahore and other cities with the latest machinery. But meat export is in crisis. You talk to the industry, it is in crisis. And even some of the abattoirs with the most latest machinery have closed. So you have abattoirs set up, they have got latest machinery in agriculture country, and yet the abattoirs have closed. So which government department is going to them, sitting with the abattoir owners who have invested millions of rupees and asking them, what happened? How can we help you to resume and to export? Government should focus on removing the obstacles, hindering meat exports. It should incentivize the industry and strategize to attract new investment in the meat export supply chain. And those from Pakistan who know that our textile industry is very strong. They have made a lot of money in the last 30 years. And they're looking for avenues to invest. So it's either food industry or construction. And food, meat is not uh, now the target. It, it was eight, 10 years ago. I know many textile unit owners who have invested in abattoirs. Now they are not coming because they know the problems. The government has to promote and incentivize animal farming if they want to keep the supply chain running. Help develop cheaper feed production so we can be competitive with the other countries. And the, and the Best example I can give you, and I was surprised, I was talking to the biggest poultry producer of Saudi Arabia. We were with them, and we were discussing about the prices, and the biggest poultry producer of Saudi Arabia, which is one of the biggest, their owner told us that the Brazilian poultry exports coming to my town in the shop outside my production plant, from Brazil, they are giving us cheaper than my X factory. Why? Because of the cheaper feed production in Brazil. We have cheaper feed production for meat and poultry. We'll be the winner, especially for poultry, actually. We have to curb the smuggling of live animals. Everybody knows neighboring countries, a lot of animals are being smuggled. Then this has to stop. We have to subsidize international trade costs if you want to help our meat export. And finally, we have to make efforts to open halal meat exports to China. I'm repeating. Why? Because China is a very important market to focus for the halal meat export. The local population of China is double the size of GCC countries, where we all are ending up uh, exporting. And this is creating a major requirement of halal products. The, and among those products, the biggest scope is meat. I've been to China two dozen times on workshops, conferences, and I have taken the figure, you know, I've already shared with you 65% is imported. Chinese are big time meat lovers. I have, I've, I've sat with them in halal restaurants all over China. They eat rice and meat in any form. They love meat. And this is halal meat restaurants. What is the ratio? We're talking about 100 million plus minus Muslims who are in China among, from the 1.2 billion. So you're talking about 100 million People market, which is unfortunately importing from other countries, not from Pakistan, because we have not opened. So please, the government officials, please help Pakistan do whatever you have to do, strategize. I can tell you, even if you work 48 hours in a day, the entire country cannot fulfill the China requirements. Russia. Very big market. We have no focus. It's one of the biggest meat importers in the world. Muslim consumers within the Russian states need halal. How many people know about Dagestan, one of the Russian states? 99% Muslims. How many companies from Pakistan are selling? 99% Muslims within Russia. 
and the CIS countries around Russia, huge potential for halal meat as well as other halal food products. Believe you me, even Russia can not, uh, you know, it cannot fulfill the Russian requirement. It's so huge. Moving on, we have to concentrate on developing non-traditional food products, which are local. We have dates. Malaysia imports a lot of dates from all over the world. Why not from Pakistan? We have honey. We can sell dates and honey as halal certified. Brand it as halal. We have to focus to brand our products halal. Other processed food products and especially target and non-Muslim countries with Muslim population because they are eager to welcome halal food products. I'll give you the example of Himalayan pink salt, which is very much in demand all over the world. India used to import from Pakistan, export to all over the world as made in India. Thank God it has stopped now. So our salt is with us. Pakistani companies can use their own brands along with the halal mark and target the Muslim consumers in USA, Europe, Africa, and Asia. We know they love the pink salt. Halal non-food sectors. Halal cosmetic industry globally is worth 64 billion, potential of 95 billion. Pakistan has got a huge sector. But the buyers are also living very close from us. UAE, GCC, and the MENA countries. They are the biggest importer of halal cosmetics and halal personal care items. So Pakistani cosmetic industry, which is focusing locally, should focus on this huge potential, which is lying for the cosmetics, halal cosmetics and personal care, if we brand them as halal. And we should also invite the foreign buyers to do JVs with Pakistani producers, develop their brands as halal in Pakistan and export or re-export. Modest fashion, very important, 200 billion turnover of Pakistan. And it has also, for those who do not know, we have modest fashion shows on the ramps of New York, London, Italy, and Spain already. So it has reached the global market. Pakistan, we all know, is a textile-rich country, local, strong local fabric, experience, and abundance of labor, hundreds of designers and local brands. We have to strategize. We have to, to take advantage of this huge billion-dollar market and focus our exports to this, these markets as modest fashion. Main target markets, Malaysia, Indonesia, Russia, CIS countries, including Turkey, huge market for modest fashion. And we should also invite the international modest fashion designers and modest fashion councils to come to Pakistan, brand their products, take advantage of our strength and export from Pakistan. The last sector is service sector. And most important is halal tourism industry. Turnover, I've already shared with you, it covers the airlines we travel, hotels we stay, and the destinations we go to especially. Non-Muslim countries are focusing a lot to attract Muslim tourists. Two quick examples, Thailand, a Buddhist country, and certainly everybody knows Thailand as a tourist destination, but a haram tourist destination is what they are known as. But let me tell you for the last seven, eight years, Thai government has pushed a lot to attract Muslim tourists and brand their tourist destination as halal tourist destination. They are promoting halal tourism. I am myself in contract with the Thai government. I'm organizing a huge, the second biggest halal conference in Thailand, fully funded by the Thai government for the last seven years. And so I know the figures of Thailand. Japan, you go to Japan, Tokyo airport has halal food, has uh, facility to do wadu, and they have prayer area on Tokyo airport, organized by the government. Moving on to the Tokyo city, you know, one of the biggest Disney world is near Tokyo. The nearest division uh, population to the Disney world is called Chiba district. The Chiba district government mayor decided to attract Muslim tourists and they converted the entire Chiba district as halal district. You can find halal hotels, halal restaurants, mosques, toilets, because they want to attract. All the way to Mount Fuji, 
the highest peak, you will find Mount Fuji has prayer area. So when the governments decide to help promote invest, this is the result that we can see. Pakistan is officially promoting tourism due to Prime Minister Imran Khan's initiative. So we have a good opportunity to promote Pakistan as a Muslim-friendly tourism destination by developing our local industry and infrastructure to meet the international halal standards and its requirements and then promote it to the world. And there should be a special focus to brand halal, uh, to brand Pakistan tourism as a Muslim-friendly tourism and, and promote it. And you'll see how Allah will give, uh, you know, uh, jaza for us and how much benefit we'll get from this. Summary of my presentation this is the last slide. We have to take advantage of the economic benefit of halal. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, the religious value of halal is supreme for all Muslims. All halal schemes must be under religious standards and SOP. There is no question about it. But if you see the countries which made to the top of the halal economy, including the top 10 export countries, the top 10 halal export countries, they all have one thing in common. They all are recognized the economic benefit of halal. And they use the economic benefit of halal for the benefit of their economy. Unfortunately, this awareness is still far away, missing in Pakistan. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much, Mr. Sajad Shah. And now I would like to invite Mr. Najib, Mufti Najib Khan Sahib, to come on the floor and give us a speech regarding, regarding halal branding in light of Sharia. والسلام على رسوله محمد وآله وصحبه أجمعين نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يدلله فلا هادي له فنشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وعده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا مولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد ناو I'm uh, a bit confused that uh, because the uh, uh, webinar was started with the Urdu speech and then Asad took an English presentation. Now, what do we do? Like uh, we go to the bilingual or uh, we just go to English or Asad, what do you suggest? Sir, you can go bilingual, it's all right. It's all right, okay. Okay, no worries. But okay, I'll just go to because a very uh, simple thing about halal. Uh, halal is actually uh, food is one of the pivotal needs of the human being. Uh, the need, choices, intake of food depend on some factors definitely in the world, health, nutrition, religion, region. But being a Muslim, uh, we have to assess whether the food is permissible in Islam or not because a Muslim has our own protocols in all aspects of life, including food. So the concept of halal in Islam is very precise intentions that uh, with the provision and regarding haram is not just created in two days thoughts. And, but if you see originated from the beginning of the creation of the worldly being Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, uh, uh, if, you, if you see uh, when the Adam alayhi salam was sent to the paradise, he was also he, he was uh, said that you do's and don'ts, don't touch this food, don't. So the concept of halal and concept of haram is since the beginning of the human being. Uh, we will see that uh, what we have discussing about the halal food, especially in the perspective of Pakistan, because uh, Brother Asad uh, gave a global perspective already, that what is the global perspective how uh, Muslim Ummah and how the internationally uh, Muslim consumes uh, 
Muslim consumer all over the world, you will find, and uh, what the population is showing in 2030, the world's population will be expected to be around 6.9 billion Muslim. So, uh, so Muslims are seeking food products uh, that are also meet their, uh, not only the food needs, but food. halal now covers the all aspects of life, including their clothing, and uh, their, uh, like for example, this whole, uh, what we were talking about, tourism, and all these things. So it covers the whole, uh, it's become a, the concept of halal is now become a standard demand. And it generates a serious attention, international and global markets, the way all these are giving this attention, uh, the way then the last slide, uh, Asad mentioned that the common factor, all these 10 major exporting countries that they realize the economic worth of the halal. And uh, uh, today's halal is one of the discussed matter around the world. The demand for halal food is increasing, increasing in Pakistan. We are living in Pakistan. 99% of the population in Pakistan is Muslim. Pakistan, the world's fourth largest producer of the rice, fifth largest producer of the dairy products, fourth largest producer of the wheat, and fifth largest supplier of the cattle. It's a member of the OIC, Islamic Federation. We have a strength. But all these strengths, are we investing these strengths in halal also. All these strands are providing the provision of halal certified foods, both the Muslim consumers as well as the halal food manufacturers in Pakistan. Halal food, despite all the positive development in the world, uh, cannot flourish in Pakistan the way it's supposed to be. The country is still in progressing. And uh, in fact, uh, the history, if you will, see back to the history because uh, I'm involved since my studies, uh, although my specialization was in Islamic finance back to 95, but uh, I have done my first halal audit uh, back to 1999 in Melbourne. It's actually at that time, uh, McDonald in Pakistan were importing a meat from the South Africa and, and the South Africa was importing from uh, Melbourne. So I, I got the chance to visit one of the avatars of the Melbourne who were uh, exporting beef to South Africa and from South Africa supply chain, it comes to McDonald's, Pakistan. Since, if you will see, the halal journey started in Pakistan from 1996, although a statement in federal constitution of Pakistan 1973 received an obligation on concerned authorities. But in 1996, the first halal draft consisting of only a few papers was prepared, officially reviewed, and then after then 2010, and then you will see that the Halal Authority came later on. But before it, 2005, the SQCA have got this initiative with Summit OIC members. They made uh, the, especially, and uh, National Standardization Body, the SQC made, who made the Halal Standards. And uh, I'm a member of uh, this committee since the initial stages of 2005. This committee has a team of near about 45 members who comprise, prof comprise professionals, experts, every field, and most of, most of the stack stakeholders are there. And uh, since uh, the basis of halal standard is the Sharia, there's a team of 10, eight to 10 dedicated muftis who diligently perform their roles in this standard making process and uh, hold this, uh, we made this standards also, but, that is also a fact. It was found that the consumer still has a strange attitude towards halal logo and certification. In fact, the manufacturer also find it still is a, a liability, not an asset. They are not considering halal as a marketing tool or marketing asset. Rather, they are thinking that that is a liability. And even though industry has found that logo and status can be marketing tool, but in Pakistan still, and I really, I do agree with the Asad. The most important thing is uh, awareness in all stakeholders, all major stakeholders. I am representing a uh, uh, institution, religious institutions also. I'm a, a Sharia chairman of uh, a body is called Halal Awareness and Research Council. Awareness is the biggest gap in between stakeholders. Awareness in uh, religious stakeholders, awareness in the food technologies, academia, and also uh, manufacturers in the business community. 
on the employee's awareness. Uh, like I, I'm representing a body, Halal Awareness and Results Council. We, Alhamdulillah, started in 19, uh, 2010. And in last 10 years, we have we gave trainings more than 800 muftis, more than 200 food technologists and consumers, and all free. We are doing this free trainings and <laughs> awareness sessions, which call it Halal Awareness and Results Council. So most important thing, there are uh, halal as present what's happening in Pakistan. The most important thing is this halal branding and halal logo have uh, still a, a lot of misconceptions are going on behind. That's why uh, many companies are still looking halal as a, as a obstacle or a liability or a hindrance because they don't know the worth. <laughs> and yes, one of the important thing, I do agree with, the, with the Assad, what Assad was mentioning, uh, back to South African incident or somebody who was about uh, asking about uh, uh, the red wine and it was actually uh, our one of the squishes which we normally use, uh, one of the syrups uh, uh, famous. So what, what does it mean? It means we consumer of Pakistan, the Muslim population of Pakistan, the normal Muslim who is living in Pakistan, they have this perception that we are living in a Muslim country, so everything is halal. And if it is not halal, that's the responsibility of the government. They should do this thing. Now, if you see the side of the government, so that unfortunately, unfortunately, is still we also didn't realize the worth and the value of the halal. And I travel all over the world and I can tell you, I met with the Muslims, normal Muslims. They really, they really love Pakistani products. They feel that Pakistan halal is actually, a con they, are, they are the conservative country. So if they are saying halal and they have a halal certified logo, it means halal means halal. They don't have hacky panky this one. So the worth, we are not realizing our worth. <laughs> now, this uh, halal logo, why we need halal logo? Because you see, for consumer to differentiate that whether this product is halal or not, it's very important right now because ingredients are coming all over the world. For example, uh, in food products, there's gelatin and emulsifiers and ingredients. And unfortunately, the food technologies who are making re uh, recipes, they, they, they are not aware of this halal and haram things, and they think only halal and haram is a meat issue. But this is not the case. Halal and haram is not the meat issue. It's actually halal is a process from farm to fork. So halal supply chain covers more all areas. There are the processes, there's the ingredients, procurement, all like, so this halal logo is distinguishing their goods or manufactured products from other products in the market. Like ordinary trademark differs from a certification trademark because it provides a warranty to show those goods and services have accomplished a specific requirement. So halal certification as a symbol of value, health ecosystem not only works and assure to verify the product's conformity of Islamic dietary law, but also ensures that it comprises all permitted elements of hygiene and halal. So this is important thing, and uh, it's very it's a responsibility of the government also, as well as the federation bodies, as well as uh, the chambers, that to ensure a Muslim consumer gets genuine halal food although it's a difficult to get a genuine halal food, they're quite difficult because there are many foods with unauthorized halal labels also. And uh, the way you cannot make your balance sheet by yourself, you need an accreditation, you need a certified chartered accountant body <laughs> who accredit your balance sheet. The same way, halal 
if you are putting your product as a halal to so self accreditation is not the accepted in all over the world in any discipline so this halal certification this halal certified logo is provide the assurance to the consumer that ingredients used and process involved in making food are sharia compliant it's ensured and uh, so the consumer is getting not only the pleasure but rather he has this assurance and reliance towards food they consume and uh, halal certified food uh, high level of hygiene also and uh, that's all standards of psqc covers most of the things but yes uh, there are certain challenges for this halal logo yes because accreditation has a cost there's a cost behind it so the genuine thing is for exporters they need accredited halal logo but if you will see the others ones like for example uh, uh, the common uh, manufacturers who are just producing their things and distributing inside the pakistan what we need actually we need to develop a economical model of a halal certification i am not saying compromising the quality and standards rather i am saying the cost because a common person or a manufacturer or a simple starter man a simple starter man who is uh, sitting in a in our mohallas if if we ask him a halal certification it will be a cost on him definitely we need to develop a process or sops where we can work on it because not everyone what the accredited but so accreditation whether we change accreditation model or certification model with regulations with the standards with quality we need such type of things also and yes training area is important but sometime people ask this question people are using this halal logo for promoting their market whether this halal logo this halal branding is allowed yes making halal branding putting halal logo it all depends on your intention man in namal amalo biniyat the way you make intention why not you are making intention that i am putting i am doing all this process so the whole muslim umma can eat a proper halal food a muslim umma can take a halal food so once you make this intention then this whole your manufacturing will be providing a umma a halal food that is the greatest reward which you are getting whatever you are consuming whatever you are manufacturing whether it is a soap or whether it's another thing or whether it is a cosmetics or whether it is a pharmaceutical industry or just make intention <laughs> that i will provide halal so inshallah <clears throat> for this allah subhanahu wa taala will give the barakah in your business and for government yes it's very important to bring these challenges and uh, the most uh, difficulty which is facing right now is the meat industry they are facing really difficulty because most of the research or the promotions been done for the dairy products and for the milking of the animal but not been done a lot for fattening and that's why our traceability audit of meat is missing because we don't have any a fatting organized fatting forms we need this thing so they can we can control the pricing of the meat in a country also while doing exports so inshallah with the, this one i am uh, assuming that inshallah such type of awareness sessions will create the thirst and also uh, awareness and also a demand and consumer side also and manufacturer side also and exporters also and uh, we can develop a form Uh, forums from where we can put our demand in front of the governments to uh, provide some relaxations to the halal exporters people who are using halal brand to give them relaxations in taxes and other things so inshallah with this i am just ending because uh, i have a limitation of the time so jazakumullah ahsan al jaza thank you very much assalam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh thank you very much najib khan sir um Now I would like to inform that Alama Shabir Hasan Masmi Sahab cannot join us today, but he has uh, sent it as a video message speech. Uh, I would like everyone to hear to it.
من الناس ان الله لا يهدي القوم الكافرين ايت کے پہلے حصے کو اگر ہم دیکھتے ہیں کہ اے ہمیں رہبی یا ای الرسول بلغ ما انزل علیك من ربك پہنچا دو جو تمہاری طرف بھیجا گیا ہے ما انزل من ربك اپ کے رب کی طرف سے بس یہ پہنچانا حکم الہی ہے کہ اللہ کے پیغام کو انسانوں تک پہنچایا جائے جس طرح سے اللہ تعالی نے اپنے حبیب سے یہ بات کہی کہ میرے پیغام کو پہنچا دو اس طرح سے اللہ کے حبیب نے ہم سے کہا کہ میرے پیغام کو ہر اس شخص تک پہنچاؤ جس تک پہنچا سکتے ہو وہ پیغام اسلام کا پیغام ہے اور اسی میں ایک گائیڈنس یہ دی گئی سورہ سورہ احزاب ایت نمبر 39 بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الذین یبلغون رسالات الله ويخشون ولا يخشون احدا الا الله وكفى بالله حسيبا یہ وہ لوگ ہیں کہ جو اللہ کی رسالت کو پہنچاتے ہیں اور اللہ سے ڈرتے ہیں اور اللہ کے علاوہ کسی اور کا ان کو کوئی خوف نہیں ہوتا وكفى بالله حسيبا اور اللہ تعالی حساب کرنے کے لیے کافی اس کے علاوہ بھی میسج پہنچانے پر بہت سی آیات موجود ہیں سورہ ابراہیم کی آیت نمبر 32 بھی ہے ہذا بلاغ للناس پورا ذکر آیا ہوا ہے اسلام میں تبلیغ اور پہنچانے کے کام کو بہت اہمیت دی گئی ہے اور خاص کر یہ کہا گیا ہے کہ دین کے پیغام کو جہاں تک ہو سکے اس کو پہنچاؤ میرے الفاظ مت پکڑیے گا میری بات کو سمجھنے کی کوشش کیجئے کہ آئی نو اٹس اے نگیٹو وے آف اسپیکنگ لیکن سمجھانے کے لیے آج دنیا میں مارکیٹنگ جو ہے وہ ایک بہت بڑی انڈسٹری بن گئی ہے آئی ڈونٹ نو ہاؤ مینی بلین ڈالر میرے پاس ٹائم نہیں ہے کہ میں چیک کروں ایک کمپنی ایک کولڈ ڈرنک اسٹارٹ کر دی ہے کولڈ ڈرنک پہ کاسٹ کم ہے اس کی مارکیٹنگ پہ پبلسٹی پہ تاکہ لوگوں کے ذہن میں داخل ہو جائے کیا ہے وہ کولڈ ڈرنک کے بجائے اب یہ پی لو وہ کپڑا استعمال کرنے کے بجائے اب یہ کپڑا استعمال کر لو وہ موبائل استعمال کرنے کے لیے حالانکہ کتنی بڑی بات ہے ایک بلیک کلر کی کولڈ ڈرنک سے وائٹ کلر کی کولڈ ڈرنک نام نہیں لیتا تھا کہ کوئی وہ نہ ہو یا ایک خاص کمپنی کے کپڑے کے بجائے دوسرے خاص کمپنی کا کپڑا لے لو سیمسنگ کے بجائے ایپل لے لو ایپل کے بجائے ہوا لے لو جیومی لے لو مارکیٹ میں اس وقت ایک پوری جس کو کہتے ہیں نا جنگ ہے اب جہاں دنیا میں ہر چیز کی مارکیٹنگ ہو رہی ہے اچھی اور بری کیا شریعت اس بات کو پسند نہیں کرے گی کہ دینی امور کو بھی بہتر انداز میں مارکیٹنگ کا لفظ استعمال کرنے سے گریز کروں گا مناسب نہیں ہے دینی امور کو بھی بہتر انداز میں پیش کیا جائے دینی امور کو بھی اس طرح سے پیش کیا جائے کہ دور تک اس کا افیکٹ آئے دینی امور کو بھی اس طرح سے پریزنٹ کیا جائے کہ پبلک کے اندر اس کی ایکسپٹنس ہونے لگے بالکل نماز کے لیے آپ دیکھیں لوگ جاتے ہیں تبلیغ پہ بلاتے ہیں کھڑے ہوتے ہیں بات کرتے ہیں آج سوشل میڈیا میں واٹس ایپ پہ چھوٹی چھوٹی کلپس آتی ہیں موقع کے لیے تیار ہو جائے امانتیں دے دو کسی کا مال مت خرچ ہو جو بھی دین کی طرف تو جس طرح سے دین کے اور امور ہیں اس طرح سے دین کے امور میں ایک اہم امر حلال ہے ایک چیز کا حلال ہونا چاہے وہ تہارت اور نجاست کے لحاظ سے ہو چاہے وہ حلال اور حرام کسی کے مال کھانے کے لحاظ سے یہاں پر حلال کو ہم نے تہارت اور نجاست کے عنوان سے لیا ہے کہ انسان جو چیز استعمال کر رہا ہو 
उसे इतमान होना चाहिए कि दीन उसे कबूल कर रहा है कि इसे इस्तेमाल कर और दीन ने उसको अनुमान रखा है हलाल और अमीर मोमिन अली नबी तलाम ने तो ये बात फरमा दी है वफ़ी हलाल ही हिसाब उन वफ़ी हराम ही अकाब उन इसके हलाल में हिसाब है इसके हराम में अकाब है तो अकाब से बचने के लिए हलाल को सही तरीके से हासिल करना ज़रूरी है अब हम लोगों को अगर ये पैगाम पहुँचा रहे हैं कि देखें अपने टूथपेस्ट चेक करें <coughs> अपना टूथब्रश चेक करें अपना साबुन चेक करें देखिए हमारे यहाँ सिर्फ खाने में हलाल हराम की फिक्र आती है उन्हें नहीं पता है कि आपके जो बूट की पॉलिश है उसके कंटेंट्स हलाल हैं या हराम हैं आपके कपड़े में जो चीज़ें बनाने में इस्तेमाल हुई हैं धोने में इस्तेमाल हुई हैं हम समझते हैं कि सिर्फ लेदर के मसले में और खाने पीने के मसले नहीं अगर आप तोज्जो करेंगे तो आपको अंदाज़ा होगा कि मोर देन सेवेंटी परसेंट ऑफ आइटम्स वी आर यूजिंग उसमें आपको चेक करना होगा कि ये हलाल है या नहीं वॉट इज द सिंपल डेफिनेशन ऑफ हलाल हैज इस्लाम परमिटेड टू यू हैज इस्लाम परमिटेड मी टू यूज दिस थिंग इन दिस वे आप हर चीज को उठा के देखेंगे जो आपकी जिंदगी की पर्सनल यूज में कॉस्मेटिक्स हैं मेडिसिन हैं हर्ब्स हैं हर्बल मेडिसिन हैं कपड़े हैं पॉलिश हैं मैनी यू नेम द थिंग इट इज देर तो हलाल ब्रांडिंग के जरिए हर वक्त ये नहीं होता कि हलाल ब्रांडिंग करें ताकि कमाई हो रोजी तो देने वाली जात अल्लाह की जात है वल्लाज यशा वगैरह हिसाब लेकिन एक इंसान मेहनत कर रहा है खास कर आगा सद सजा साहब की टीम मेहनत कर रही है कि चीज़ों को हलाल सर्टिफाई करें ताकि लोगों को इतमान हासिल हो कि हम हलाल ट्रैवल कर रहे हैं हम हलाल बैंकिंग कर रहे हैं हम हलाल ट्रेड कर रहे हैं नाम लेता जाऊंगा तो मेरा टाइम वैसे ही ख़त्म हो जाएगा तो हलाल ब्रांडिंग को न सिर्फ ये कि मैं मुफीद समझता हूँ हलाल ब्रांडिंग को मैं ज़रूरी समझता हूँ और अल्लाह ताला ने हुक्म दिया कि पहुँचा दो मेरे पैगाम को तो हलाल के पैगाम को अगर हम पहुँचाना शुरू करें तो लोग हराम से और ममनुआ चीज़ से अपने आप को इसलिए कि मुसलमान के दिल में तो इस्लाम की मोहब्बत है और अगर इस्लाम ने हलाल और हराम का कॉन्सेप्ट दिया है वैसे तो नेचर में हलाल और हराम का कॉन्सेप्ट मौजूद है लेकिन हम इस्लाम में आके बात करते हैं नेचर में जहर हराम दूध अगर इसमें जहर नहीं मिला हो तो हलाल है तो ये तो नेचर हो गया लेकिन अल्लाह ताला ने स्पेसिफाई किया है कि देखो जो चीज तुम इस्तेमाल कर रहे हो वो हलाल इस्तेमाल करो और इस हलाल इस्तेमाल करने की तरफ लोगों को रागब करना इबादत है आप तस्वुर नहीं कर सकते कि जब किसी को आप हराम या नजिस या फॉरबिटिन चीज के बारे में गाइड करते हैं तो वो कितना दिल में आपको दुआ देते हैं आई थिंक हलाल ब्रांडिंग वक्त की जरूरत है न सिर्फ मुफीद है वक्त की जरूरत है और जिस तरह से दूसरी इबादतों की तरफ माइल करना रगबत दिलाना बहुत सवाब है लोगों को हलाल चीज की तरफ माइल करना बहुत ज्यादा सवाब है इसलिए कि जब इंसान हलाल चीजों को इस्तेमाल करता है तो उसकी रूह भी पाक से पाक साफ से साफ रोशन से रोशन नूरानी से नूरानी होती रहती है और उसकी जिंदगी एक पुरसकून जिंदगी गुजर रही होती है कि हम हलाल चीजें इस्तेमाल कर रहे हैं पाकिस्तान में क्योंकि माहौल ही यह है कि हलाल चीज हो पाकिस्तान में क्योंकि माहौल ही ये है मुसलमान हैं तो पाक चीज़ें होंगी लेकिन अगर आप मुर्गी के ज़बा करने के मसले पर आ जाएं दूसरे मसाइल पर आ जाएं तो आपको अंदाज़ा होगा कि बहुत सी चीज़ें शरीयत के कानून के मुताबिक नहीं हैं और इस टीम ने बहुत बेहतर अंदाज में इस काम को आगे बढ़ाने का फ़ैसला किया बल्कि बढ़ा ही रहे मैं तो फैसला करने की क्या बात कर रहा हूँ बढ़ा ही रहें ट्रेड डेवलपमेंट डेवलपमेंट अथॉरिटी ऑफ पाकिस्तान का ये बहुत ही बड़ा काम है अल्लाह तैन को 
دنیا و آخرت میں کامیابی عطا فرمائے اور امید ہے انشاءاللہ کہ اللہ تعالیٰ کا پیغام جو اس کے حبیب حضرت محمد مصطفیٰ صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم خاتم الانبیاء و المسلین کے ذریعے ہم تک پہنچائیں ہم ہر مسلمان تک پہنچائیں اور اسے حلال کی طرف نصیب صرف ترغیب دلائیں بلکہ اسے دل سے راضی کریں کہ وہ صرف حلال چیزوں کو استعمال کریں تاکہ اس کی روح صاف رہے تینکیو ویر مچ اللہ تعالیٰ آپ سب کی توفیقات میں اضافہ فرمائے اور ہمیں اپنی زندگی کو حلال چیزوں کے ذریعے آگے بڑھانے کی توفیق عطا فرمائے والسلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ Thank you very much and that was Alama Shabir Hassan Nasimi. Um, now I would like to end this uh, session, awareness session, since we are running out of time as well. So we will end the session now. Um, if anybody has any questions so kindly you can ask us okay. if anybody have any questions kindly put in the chat box so we can answer your question assalamu alaikum walaikum assalam okay um I'm from Malaysia. So uh, thank you very much for the presentation. It's very transparent, very candid presentations. Uh, I have several things that I would like to comment here and probably some suggestion as well. Uh, first and foremost, whatever concern that you raised just now is very valid in terms of local issues, global issues, so on and so forth. But what I would like to share with you is that we currently in Malaysia, we are working very closely with Pakistan High Commissioner in the area of one. This is where I would like to share with you that yes, Malaysia, we are promoting for economic cooperations among the Muslim countries. So uh, this is where we hope by the very fact that Allah sent us COVID virus is a special gift for all the Muslim countries. So for this reason, this is the best time that all Muslim countries must work hand in hand for economic cooperations. So what we are planning to do between Pakistan and Malaysia is basically to look at the strategic cooperation, i.e. of course there are a lot of big tickets, highly strategic cooperation in the sense that we know that Pakistan are championing, well experienced in terms of a jet fighter, all the big ticket items, weapon and so on and so forth, because this is what a Pakistan president, uh, your excellency have discussed and raised during the last visit with our previous uh, prime minister. And this cooperation is still valid until today so this is where we are working closely to realize the mission of having close cooperations between Pakistan and Malaysia. But at the same time, we do not neglect the potential for us to really work closely for the low hanging fruits. The low hanging fruit, this is where we see a very huge potential for us to work in terms of meat supply from Pakistan. Yes, I am fully aware about the issue. Why is that 85% of the user purchaser of the halal product are coming from Muslim countries. And yet 15% those supply of the halal product, either they come from non-Muslim countries or they come from Muslim countries. And yet the owner of the company are actually not a Muslim. So this is where we are talking where we can really look at the potential of strategic partnership between first in terms of meat product secondly on the poultry the third on the textile all the fashions the leather goods the fourth the potential for us to really explore on the market in terms of pharmaceutical 
because Pakistan really champion in some area on the pharmaceutical product and the fifth on the medical tourism, halal tourism. So these are the five things that we are currently focused at. Of course, at the same time, we are exploring in terms of increasing the numbers of buying rice from Pakistan. Uh, Malaysian are fond of uh, basmati rice from Pakistan. Unfortunately, in the past, in terms of trade finance, we are really can see there are some decrease the numbers of import from Pakistan. But now, Alhamdulillah, uh, because of a new strategic partnership with the government, with the agency that uh, supply all the rice from other part of the world, especially in Malaysia, we are talking about Bernas, we can see that we can increase the numbers of uh, import from Pakistan. Uh, one of the areas that I would like to suggest here is that to understand the whole ecosystem, halal ecosystem. When I talk about equal halal, halal ecosystem, it comes four pillars. One about the value supply chain. We need to really focus, make sure that the value supply chain from raw to finish, from the branding, packaging, transportation must be fully comply with Sharia compliance. So this is where I would like to share with you the opportunity that we really focus on creating halalan toiban wa mubarakan. What is halalan toiban wa mubarakan? Because this is the really paradigm shift that we are talking about championing, helping all the Muslim countries, Muslim businessmen, community, when we can create the idea of halalan toiban wa mubarakan. What does that mean? Halal means, yes, anybody, any non-Muslim company can provide halal product, but because of toiban means certain percentage, halal executive, halal share council must be in, so they need to comply with this. But of course, mubarakan means the company must be 100% owned by Muslim. This is the future. And I'm talking here about when we talk about value halal, value supply chain mean, even we look at the source of the funding. Imagine if, I'm just quote unquote here, if the product coming from India, I'm, I'm trying to compare a very simple analogy. We purchase quite huge numbers of uh, product from India, especially about meat. And we know that India is non-Muslim company, non-Muslim country, and Pakistan is Muslim uh, country. When we talk about all the product that produced in Pakistan, definitely, personally, I would say, definitely halal. And at the same time, we also tackle the issue of riba here. Because all the product in Pakistan are all financed by halal, Islamic banking Islamic finance. That means the source are fully halal. As compared to India, Yes, the product may be Sharia compliant because uh, they meet all the requirements, but the source of the funding is questionable. So these are the paradigm shift that I would like the whole world to really change so that the time for us, the Muslim countries, the Muslim business community will have a better in terms of competitiveness as compared to non-Muslim. That's one thing. So uh, because I don't think that we have much time, I, I would love, I have prepared Actually, I prepared four issues that four pages when I capture. Sir, we don't have much from, time for I, Yeah, this is where I would love to have a more serious discussion. Maybe uh, the organizer can arrange for another meeting so that I can give uh, lengthy my thought and not only thought, this is about how we in Malaysia, we are working closely with High Commissioner Pakistan in Malaysia in Kuala Lumpur. And we're not talking about planning, we're talking about strategy partnership with the government, with the business community, and of course, like it or not, we need to get support, full support from the end user. So inshallah, you will see a lot of tremendous changes in terms of in terms of economy uh, landscape between Pakistan and uh, Kuala Lumpur, inshallah. Thank Jazakallah. You. I don't want to take too much time. Thank you. Anyone else would like to have any questions? मैं मसूद अहमद हूँ ये कमर्शियल काउंसलर तेहरान से बात कर रहा हूँ मेरा एक क्वेश्चन है उसके दो पार्ट हैं एक तो ये है कि जो 
सर्टिफाइंग uh, बॉडीज हैं क्या हलाल डेवलपमेंट काउंसिल उनको ऑथराइज uh, uh, करती है या सर्टिफिकेट्स इशू करती है और दूसरा किसी कंट्री uh, के साथ उसको सर्टिफिकेट को रिकगनाइज करने के लिए म्यूचुअल रिकगनीशन के लिए क्या एग्रीमेंट या एम साइन करने पड़ते हैं क्योंकि यूनिलेटरली तो ऑबियसली कंट्रीज मे नॉट एंटरटेन सर्टिफिकेट इवन बाई एच डी सी पाकिस्तान में PNAC PNAC Pakistan National Accreditation Council which is oh, excuse me no no PNAC Pakistan National Accreditation Council which is the official body for all type of accreditation of the certification bodies labs and halal certification bodies also PNAC ne halal accreditation ka uh, ka standard liya hai Pakistan government se PSQC is yeah, which is the standard body and PSQC has made the halal standard for the uh, three standards one for the production for the factories one for the certification body and the third for the accreditation body so PNAC the official government accreditation body does accreditation as per the PSQC halal standards and uh, you can find the list of the accredited body on PNAC website it's pinag.org so that is the answer of uh, the first question uh, point and um, for the global recognition basically if you ask me honestly there is no global uh, unified recognition or accreditation as such there are different organizations working the um, there is uh, there is the gcc accreditation which is uh, primarily accepted in the gulf countries only then there is uh, malaysia which is uh, the malaysian accreditation uh, it's not accreditation it's recognition by malaysia basically uh, by jakim and that is recognized in malaysia and a lot of muslim countries and non muslim countries indonesia was also doing uh, this which was primarily for for them now saudi arabia has uh, last year in november they have come up with their own Uh, unique uh, accreditation or re- recognition uh, for exports to Saudi Arabia. You have to get through that process. So uh, you know there's, but the body which was available and is still there in the world, it's called SMIC, which is under SMIIC, which is under OIC. So OIC's official halal organization is called SMIC. SMIC has launched uh, an accreditation. system for certification bodies in most non muslim countries but unfortunately no one has gone to simic so far because the acceptability of simic is has still not been established so if you have simic accreditation it's very good for a certificate but if you want to export to uae for that matter you cannot you have to have the uae accreditation If you want to export to Saudi Arabia, you you have to have Saudi uh, accreditation. If you want to export to Malaysia, you have to have Malaysian. So although all these countries are part of CIMIC, but because as I said in in my presentation that the unification is not there, everybody goes to the meetings, talk about unification, harmonization. When they come back, they're all working on their own countries' agenda. So I I'm sorry, it's not a positive answer, but this is. the actual situation in the world i hope i tried to answer you thank you very much thank you very much for your detailed answer sir thank you thank you sir uh, anyone have any other questions i think since there is no any other question so we are going to end the session and i thank all of you our diu broad and our guest who have joined us here and online so thank you very much for joining us today from dab and all over the world so uh, 
Take care and Allah Hafiz from DF and Shahad and DHT here in Karachi.